Well, looks like we have a new record holder. A research team, whose paper you can find in the description below, discovered the most distant galaxy we've ever seen by using the iconic James Webb Space Telescope. The galaxy whose name and whose location you see right here. While also discovering another galaxy at a relatively similar distance and discovering why these galaxies exist so early on and what's actually happening here to begin with. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to discuss a new record holder, talk about these early galaxies and what's happening inside of them, and I guess talk about whether this actually violates any of the known cosmological models, such as the famous Big Bang Theory. Although just to give you a bit of a spoiler here, the answer is no, not really. It's still good, everything here is fine. But what I wanted to start with is of course the video I made maybe a few years ago about the previous record holder we've discussed recently in one of the videos right there. This is the galaxy known as GNZ11, and this was the farthest galaxy we've ever seen. The galaxy that also possesses one of the most active black holes that you can learn more about in that video. But since the James Webb became operational, pretty much right away researchers started to discover even more distant galaxies, with each new discovery beating old records. And a few months back we've discussed this, Jade's GS Z13-0 a galaxy that was the most distant for at least a few months and whose distance was confirmed by separate studies. Here this was a galaxy at a redshift of 13.2 and that existed when the universe was possibly only about 350 to 400 million years old. Although intriguingly, because of its unusually small size and because it was kind of compact, one of the unusual propositions here was that maybe this was not the sign of a very distant galaxy, but instead a sign of what's known as a dark star a hypothetical dark matter star that we've discussed in one of the other videos in the description. Either way, this was a really exciting discovery and a super exciting confirmation. And interestingly, if you convert this redshift to a physical distance, this is approximately 33.6 billion light years away from us. Now, I'm sure someone in the comments is going to ask how is that possible if the light is only about 13.4 billion years old, and the answer is expansion of the universe. As things expand, they get longer and longer, and so the light from this galaxy traveled a much longer distance. But around this time, a lot of additional galaxies were discovered by other studies, with some even claiming galaxies that could be at a redshift of 17 or even higher, implying that they basically existed when the universe was much, much younger. But further analysis, especially analysis using spectroscopy, established that these galaxies just appear to be really far away, but in reality were much closer. And here it's because the scientists, when they use spectroscopy, can usually establish direct distances with extreme precision. But by just looking at how red the galaxy is, sometimes we do get wrong results. And so basically, this galaxy was still a record holder for many, many months. It appeared to be the farthest, the most redshifted, with only one other galaxy even coming close. This was an object known as Uncover Z13 but it was probably just a little bit closer. But because many of these galaxies still lacked the spectroscopic confirmation, it was not clear if any of the other candidates were actually even farther. And well, it turns out that some were. And so this is pretty much coming from the same image, but of a different object. And here the redshift was established to be 14.32, or almost 100 million years before that other galaxy I showed you previously implying that this potentially existed when the universe was only about 300 million years old, with the spectroscopy of elements inside this galaxy directly confirming the distance. And there was actually another candidate in this image as well, but this one might be just a little bit closer, despite the name suggesting otherwise. But one question you might be asking yourself is, okay, but how exactly do they know the distance? How can the distance be possibly so accurate? down to a decimal point of the redshift. And here this is a really intriguing technique based on what we know about the early universe. If you've been on this channel long enough, you probably know that back in the days, and here we're talking about really back in the days, billions of years ago, the entire universe was covered in what's known as the neutral hydrogen. This is also often referred to as the dark ages, because during this time any kind of a high energy light, for example ultraviolet light or even x-rays, would actually strike neutral hydrogen, being absorbed by it, changing it into hydrogen ions. Which basically resulted in a very strange phenomenon where a lot of light from various stars would only pass through this gas if it was not high in energy. 
So basically, if a typical star was emitting a lot of ultraviolet light, that star would be practically invisible. All of this neutral hydrogen would block its light until all of the gas around the star would ionize over time. And that's actually the period we also refer to as reionization period. It very likely lasted for several hundred million years until all of the hydrogen gas finally transformed. And because a lot of early stars were extremely hot, producing a lot of UV light, most of them were basically kind of hidden. Which also suggests that by looking at very, very distant galaxies, their light would look a little bit different. Today we call these galaxies Lyman break galaxies because they all essentially possess an unusual drop in frequencies around the wavelength of a typical UV light. And that's because all of this hydrogen absorbs the light after this, only letting certain wavelengths through. And we know the exact frequency for this because it's usually referred to as the Lyman break. And well, by knowing this frequency, you can then start measuring exact distances to a lot of super, super distant galaxies by looking at spectroscopy of those distant galaxies. Which is precisely what was done here. And here's that Lyman break for this galaxy. Basically here, the Lyman break was redshifted as if this galaxy was at the redshift of 14.32. And there's really no other explanation other than this is a super, super distant galaxy whose light is being blocked by neutral hydrogen because it's in the early universe. With one of the studies in the description below going through exact details of how this was discovered by using the James Webb Space Telescope. But here the discovery was also surprising for other reasons, because these galaxies are super active. They seem to display evidence for extremely vigorous star formation, with all of those stars naturally producing a lot of ultraviolet light that's then shifted toward infrared visible to the James Webb. With this galaxy also being relatively large and actually really bright for a galaxy existing so early on. Although when we say large, large for a galaxy during this period, it's still just a fraction of the size of the Milky Way. With the main discovery in this case suggesting that all of this light is really produced by these active stars and not really some kind of a black hole in the center, as suggested by some other studies or as seen in other galaxies. So basically this is not a quasar, this is really just active star formation. But star formation happening at an extremely fast pace. And something very similar is seen in this galaxy as well. But obviously no one can explain yet how these galaxies are able to exist so early on or basically 300 million years after the Big Bang. Which was one of the initial puzzles first identified just over a year ago. As you can see in this particular image, there are actually a few galaxies that are really far away and at least one of them, still a candidate, appears to be even farther. And so actually for many months, the researchers thought that maybe this too was a much closer galaxy and the initial redshift was calculated incorrectly. But by conducting additional observations by using a near-infrared camera and by using specific filters, they were able to remove all of the galaxies nearby, only leaving behind galaxies that were really far away. With all of this brightness basically coming from hydrogen and even some of it coming from atoms like oxygen, implying that even enrichment of elements has already begun inside this galaxy. And here we basically have something like 500 million solar masses in terms of stars, with all of them extremely active and extremely bright. But these stars are pretty young, most of them are just a few million years old, suggesting that all of this started very suddenly and basically all at once. And so that by itself already tells us that it doesn't actually violate modern cosmological theories as much as it basically presents a problem for modern theories in terms of galactic evolution. Or essentially this highlights that the models of galactic formations we currently use are most likely incorrect or incomplete. Galaxies seem to form very suddenly and extremely vigorously and, as another recent study discovered, can even acquire galactic bars much, much faster than we ever thought. Here this is a galaxy that's only a few hundred million years old and it already contains a typical galactic bar. And so galactic formation seems to be a new mystery. It looks like modern simulations lack something because whatever happened in the early universe was very, very fast and all of these stars and all of these galaxies transformed much, much faster and much more actively than we ever thought possible. Here this is an idea known as rapid mass assembly and metal enrichment. But additional search in a lot of these images produced by the James Webb revealed no additional galaxies at farther distances, specifically at redshifts of 15 to 20. And so pretty much all galaxies in this image are extremely unlikely to be farther away. 
there does not seem to be any galaxy right now existing during a period less than 300 million years after the Big Bang. And so this is definitely a super exciting new record holder and an exciting discovery confirming what the scientists believe now for several months. Galactic evolution and star formation has to be reworked from the ground up and modern computer simulations that usually tell us about how galaxies form definitely don't tell us the whole story just yet. But at least for now, that's all we know. New discovery, new record holder, and a super exciting new picture from the James Webb. Once there are additional discoveries, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. And so until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.